Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is part of a series on economic growth. In previous videos, I explained that the short-term fluctuations in economic activity can be explained by changes in aggregate demand. On the other hand, increasing aggregate supply will lead to greater economic growth in the long term. Economic growth means an increase in production, and it's also associated with increased incomes and spending. Today I'll be giving an overview on a range of impacts that economic growth can have. What I'm going to go through today might appear to be quite brief and general. That's because my plan is to eventually dedicate one video for each of the links between economic growth and the other issues. That's where I'll unpack the links in a lot more detail and depth. Let's start with the most obvious impact. Improvements in living standards. With increased real GDP per capita, incomes and production would increase. This means that consumers can satisfy more of their wants and needs. And that's why economic management is one of the key focuses of every government. Last video, I named Japan and Hong Kong as some of the most prosperous economies in Asia. This is because they have seen very high growth in real GDP per capita. And with that, they have the world's highest life expectancies and literacy rates. And with that, some of the highest human development indices in the world. Next is employment. Obviously with higher spending and production, economic growth means that there will be increased demand for labor, which leads to the unemployment rate falling. In particular, we are eliminating cyclical unemployment. Furthermore, higher incomes would mean that workers could afford education and training, which leads to improving skills and possibly reducing structural unemployment. Inflation is often worsened with economic growth. This is because if incomes and spending increases without an increase in productive capacity, aggregate demand exceeds aggregate supply. Consumers would then just be bidding higher for existing production. This is called demand pool inflation. Also, with greater job security, workers often negotiate for higher wages. This adds to the cost of production, leading to cost push inflation. External stability is a category of economic issues related to whether Australia's financial flows with other economies are sustainable. I've already made videos on the links between economic growth, balance of payments, and exchange rates in detail. Go to my channel and check out the playlist on balance of payments and exchange rates in order to find those videos. But in short, economic growth can often lead to a worsened current account deficit. This is because with greater income spending and production, Australia would inevitably buy more imports, which worsens our BOGS account. Furthermore, greater company profits mean more dividends issued and sent overseas. Interest rates often increase too, leading to greater interest outflows. Both of these lead to a worsened NPY account in the CAD. Furthermore, high interest rates and dividends will attract more foreign investments into Australia, increasing our foreign liabilities and further worsening our NPY accounts. Income distribution is often more unequal as a result of economic growth, at least in the short term. In Australia, the most profitable businesses are often the ones that have access to export markets and the most productive resources. These are naturally concentrated towards high wealth and high income communities, and therefore the rich usually get richer at a higher rate compared to low income earners. Furthermore, low income earners are usually the ones with lower skills and further less bargaining power. So while the economy is growing, they see relatively smaller increases in income. In summary, while the whole economy sees improved standards of living, the gap between rich and poor could get wider with economic growth, worsening the Gini index. Many would argue that environmental sustainability generally suffers with economic growth. This is because increased spending and production usually means more resource use, carbon emissions and pollution, amongst many other environmental issues. However, some would also argue that with economic growth, countries will have the income to invest into more sustainable practices, such as renewable energy sources and environmental restoration initiatives. Lastly, economic growth could cause governments to get closer to a surplus. This is because there'll be less expenditure on unemployment benefits, as well as less need for the government to stimulate the economy with discretionary spending. Also, as incomes and spending increase, tax revenue from income tax, GST and company profit taxes and so on would increase. Sometimes governments even introduce new taxes during strong economic growth as it's a good time for fiscal consolidation, which is trying to achieve a fiscal surplus. With a budget surplus, the government sector can play larger roles in the above issues too. For example, they would have the funds to spend on education and healthcare, leading to higher standards of living, and maybe even lessen the wage gap. Indeed, the Gini coefficient in 2013 indicated a more equal income distribution after tax, despite higher economic growth. With a budget surplus, governments could also afford to subsidize renewable energy sources and other initiatives for ecological sustainability. Again, the purpose of this video is just to give an overview of these links. My plan is to devote one video for each of the links between economic growth and the other economic issues. 
That's where there'll be a lot of depth and detail, making it easier for you to get the big marks. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss future videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like, comment, and share the video too. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.